And somewhere in this, your mental health and your physical health, which are intrinsically linked, mm -hmm. need to uh, maintain, but not just maintain. I want my physical and mental health to flourish. Yeah, get better. Absolutely. And get better. Yep. Because if you're not moving forward, you're moving backwards. Definitely. Yo. From this distant vantage point, the earth might not seem of any particular interest. Yo. But for us, preserve, cherish, the only home we've ever known. The Pale Blue Dot. Alrighty guys, welcome back to another episode of the Mind Mate Podcast. I was about to say Adventure Fit Radio then. <laughs> we are 100% back here on the Mind Mate Podcast. And today we have a special little interview uh, conversation sesh that uh, my good friend on the wellness wish list, uh, Mr. Paul Glazier, Glazier we, uh, we did together. It was half and half uh, an interview for me and half and half an interview for him as well. So we just kind of like got together, jumped on each other's podcasts, got to know each other a little bit and had some good fun. Talked a lot about, uh, I guess, the modern world and uh, I guess a little bit about what the mind mate's up to. Um, a little bit about how Paul's kind of meandered his way through the past 10 years of his life and becoming a dad and and um, and uh, moving forward into his uh, dad bod um, expose, which is uh, very exciting, guys. So I hope you uh, sincerely enjoy this one, team, and uh, I will speak to you after the show. Bye-bye. Tommy. Tommy A. Tommy Ahorn. Thanks for coming <laughs> on the show, brother. Thank you, my friend, and uh, thank you for coming on my show as well. <laughs> it's my... <laughs> God forsaken pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> Quite literally. Could be interesting. Um, so yeah, we decided to make this a bit of a a tater tate. I'm going to be the guest on Tommy's show and Tommy's going to be the guest on my show. Mm -hmm. To give you a little bit more of an insight, Tom's just started uh, a new podcast. He's been, Tommy, you've been you've been doing uh, a previous podcast for quite some time now, uh, which is called Adventure Fit. Mm. Uh, how mm -hmm. long have you been doing that for? We started that in February 2015, I think, mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, that was great, man. It, like, podcasting is is absolutely for everyone, you know. Even even just from a um, confidence building perspective, you know, getting getting really good at conversation, mm. and especially here in Melbourne, you know, the amount of people that you hear either complaining or talking about the weather is just next level, you know. <laughs> but if you actually want to learn from people and just, you know gain a little bit more of a, a different perspective on life. It's good to actually be able to ask questions um, to get that side from people, you know? Because most people just fall into shitty habits of small talk. But, um, yeah. Spot on. The, the art of listening. The art of listening, yes. Which which so few people do now. Yes. Yeah, yeah I, I love that. Uh, actually, there's one of my my favorite podcasts, or business podcasts, is a bloke by the name of uh, Pat Flynn. He does Smart, smart Passive Income. Yeah. And he was a really, really introverted bloke when he started his podcast. Mm. And uh, he, he actually started as a vehicle to, to bring himself more out into the surface. And it's amazing to see the development because he's kind of taken us on, on his journey. Mm. So I, I totally get that. That's mm. a wonderful thing. And could you hear that through his podcasting as well? So episode one, you feel like he's... You just feel like he's a bit more introverted as opposed to who he is now. 100%. Like yeah, his, yeah. De his development is kind of like just... Uh, he's taken us with it. He's been, mm. um, you know, he's, he's kind of had taken us with him mm. and he's been uncensored about it the entire way. Similarly to me, you know, mm. I, um, I've, I've mentioned this on the podcast uh, in the past, but I've had uh, various different neurological tics that have come out yeah. when I uh, when I speak or when I'm thinking, and that can come through sniffing and mm. uh, various different um, audible kind of manifestations. Yeah, yeah. And, and subconsciously, I found it interesting that I chose a podcast, an audio podcast, <laughs> to express myself because that's really bringing um, my vulnerabilities yeah. to the surface for everyone to to kind of check out 100% <laughs> yeah but it, it's empowering like you only have to watch a movie called The King's Speech to figure that stuff out you know it's My just word. it that stuff especially when I think I think um, you know not to bring it into that sort of mental health aspect too soon but as soon as you recognize that vulnerability and honesty within yourself then you can start to make change Be mm. I mean there's this some there's someone I'm following at the moment pretty rapidly called Jordan Peterson Mm. And I just finished um, finish his book. It's a really good book. But one of the things he always talk, talks about is honesty and how you should never lie. And, you know, you, you hear the age old thing, oh, don't lie, because, you know, like yada, yada, yada. But um, lying as a, as a 
Personal Responsibility Act. Literally, I started being a little bit more mindful because um, I think we're all prone to white lying here and there. And I actually made it a 2018 resolution not to white lie mm. at all and just, just be completely honest. And what I found that was most productive with it was as soon as I started being a lot more honest, not only with myself, but with the world, I found that there was a lot more accountability mm. that I had to reflect upon. So, you know, I was someone that naturally is um, a little bit disorganized with my timing, um, probably a little bit self-centered within that regard because I want to fix, finish the thing I'm doing, make sure, you know, the world revolves around Tom Ahern's clock. <laughs> but as soon as I have to go, oh, you know, I can't make it today or... Um, I'm going to be late. You start to feel a bit shitty about those things and they're, they're, they're honest excuses, but you can go, hang on, I'm actually being honest here and this is showing me that I'm actually not the person that I thought I was, mm. you know? And um, it's been fantastic. And even from a, a biological perspective, being honest makes you stronger and it makes you feel better. Mm. Like that, that shitty, anxious, grieving, disgusting feeling of lying is pumping all of that cortisol through your body, mm-hmm. you know? But mm-hmm. when you're honest and you go, hey, I'm trying my best here, you feel really good about yourself and then you get a dopamine <laughs> kick, you know? I, th- I think you're spot on. Mm. And, you know, it reminds me of uh, something that kind of came to me a number of years ago and that's the the word integrity. Mm-hmm. Uh, living your life with integrity. Every time you actually do say something and it, let's call it you're not following through with integrity yeah, yeah i it may come in the form of of lying to yourself lying to other people it's almost like you're subconsciously like letting yourself down oh you are and mm. and and that's going to have a scar that's going to leave a solid scar that you, you may not know about at the time yeah but you definitely get get a bit hard on yourself every time you do it so yeah it's a, it's a really interesting thing that you bring up and good on you for for making yourself accountable for that. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's been fun. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, um, on Friday, I just had to let you know that we couldn't make it because this is a rescheduled podcast, but fuck, moving house is a fun one. <laughs> At least he was honest about it. That's true. That's true. That's true. <laughs> so how's the move going? It's going well. Yeah, it's going well. We're, we're finished. Um, we're, we've got all the stuff out of the apartment now um, and, and that's all sorted. So it's a, it's now we're able to do a few more things Um in our own time as well, my partner and I. So she's today, she's, I think she's doing some blog writing and stuff and um, we get to hang out on a podcast and shit Fantastic. as well. So that's um, that's better, yeah. Awesome. It's good that you got a bit more free time, I guess, yeah. And it's nice that we, we're, we're in our um, makeshift studio here. Yeah. I'm at my, uh, I, feel, I feel like I'm 16 years old again, back, yeah. in, back in my old room or my brother's room at my parents' place. Hot I, chicks and Viagra signs all over it. Yeah, God bless you, Adam, you alpha male, you. Yeah. <laughs> Um, he's honest about. At least he's <laughs> it. No one has ever, ever considered uh, abusing my my brother for not being honest. That's for sure. Um, uh, I want to bring up the new podcast that you're you're tapping into. It's mm. amazing, mm. and uh, like, I've got you on the show for many reasons. Like. Much like you've got me on your show. Yeah, yeah. But um, good mates, number one. Good mates, mm. fresh mates, but fresh good mates. mates. Yeah, freight, freight. We're freight. <laughs> freight to masturbate. <laughs> Don't know what that was. Exactly. You're honest. You're <laughs> yeah, honest. that's right. Uh, so the name of your new podcast is called Mind Mate. Yep. Is that correct? Yep. Mate. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, I want you to just give us a little bit of a, a spiel, for lack of a better word, about what 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 the platform is, mm. what you're trying to bring to the surface, because I think it's really important. Yeah, uh, yeah, no, I appreciate that, man. Um, the MindMate is the associated podcast with my online business, which is the MindMate, um, and it's something that's evolved very, very rapidly because I've been so, so very well interested in. Um, lots of things about personal growth. And then I, look, essentially the mind map came about as a way to uh, market my book. So the book was a, um, a personal memoir, sort of, you know, maybe 20% of self-help um, if, if some stuff works for you, but it was a personal memoir of um, my search for identity um, coming into adulthood um, and just dealing with cement, um, some, some panic and OCD and some, some pretty significant mental health issues. Um, but um, I just felt very, it was funny, I was like, I was getting, I was becoming quite spiritual as a, as a dude, um, and writing that book was the first thing that ever felt like in, in my gut, in my soul, like, this is the right thing. Mm-hmm. It just felt so good, man, and I wrote the first draft in, in, in 20 days, like, yeah. it, it just came out of my head, I was like, wow. like this, this is something, you know. 
Um, 80,000 words, 20 days, Jan 7th to Jan 27th, 2017, just came out, you know, and it it felt like I finally had an outlet to just speak and be like, you know what, this is great. And the, the book's gone through a lot, lots of editing uh, on my part, um, because I had to make sure that it was completely honest. And look, if we're going to, if we're going to take this right back to where it all began, the, uh, the tough part about writing the book was I had to be honest with myself, number one, and there are lots of chapters and lots of little paragraphs and spiels um, in the book that are very personally um, scary, I guess, for me, because uh, I've left I've left everything in there. So it's, it's my, the 100% quote for quote diary entries that I was writing um, when I was thinking the worst and acting out the worst. Mm-hmm. Um, all this stuff that I actually didn't write in the first edit because I felt too afraid to let everyone know about it. But it's been such a fantastic confidence booster because I wanted to market it because I felt that when I was going through the worst of it, I had no one, um, I couldn't read anything. There was nothing on there about this. And if I'm speaking specifically, the compulsions I'm talking about, which were hard for me to talk about initially, were the OCD was related to hell. So I had to pick up lots of rubbish um, in the neighborhood to prove to God I was being a good person because mm-hmm. I just had this constant fear that I would um, burn in hell for eternity. Mm-hmm. And the other one with it was this very strange thing called sexual orientation obsessive compulsive disorder. And it's actually one of the most common forms of OCD, but one of the most little spoken about. And it's this constant fear. And when I say constant, it's from the moment you wake up to the moment you fall asleep um, at compulsion and thought that somehow your ch- sexuality is going to change. And it was really weird, man. Like for someone that, you know, has always grown up um, happily interested in girls, you know, just anything, you know, and this is, I'm very liberal individual, like do what you want, you know. Um, but it was just strange because that's when anxiety can get really tough, when it can, it hits you with your personal values mm-hmm. and you're not sure what's going on because you start thinking the worst. And um, what really helped me was I actually read an article about a, a, a guy who was gay that constantly feared that he would turn straight for five years. Wow. A really fascinating article. Um, and um, that sort of stuff. So putting that to the book, um, very honest recounts. I never read anything about it. I wanted to make sure that other people, because it was so common, other people could read it. So I started marking it, um, doing a lot of YouTube videos about it. And then I wanted to put something out there. So I made the Mind Mate, which is just a really like easy way for me just to, you know... Um, remind myself that it's just your mind, mate, you know, just relax. It's just your mind, mate, you know? So I wanted to call it the mind, mate. Um, and then the mind mate's actually shifted now and was very much about mental health and the podcast is about mental health. Absolutely. But the mind mate is actually online programming and online tools for men in their twenties to, um, lead more authentic lifestyles because Mm -hmm. I think mental health can fall. You can fall into the issue of mental ill health when there are things in your life that, um, you know, for, for uh, not necessarily your own fault, disingenuous. You know, there are lots of things in my life, the people I was hanging out with, not bad people, just weren't true to me. Um, Some of the things I was doing, I I was always bored. Um, Things about personal responsibility, you know, that I I guess crept in and allowed for these mental health issues to to, um, present themselves. But the mind mate is um, for men to, I guess, be more empowered to lead authentic lifestyles. And we we teach them about um, fear and emotions, about how to train, for, for lifestyle application, um, to appropriately goal set um, and figure out how your mind actually works with your environment um, for the better. And then also things like personal responsibility and behavior and what you're putting out into the universe and how that may affect the universe that um, is obviously um, you're, you're seeing. So yeah, it's, it's been a, a, uh, a journey. <laughs> it's amazing because there are so many uh, men out there that are... Perhaps um, they have blocks mm. and barriers to allow them to kind of go there, mm. to allow them to be a little bit um, <clears throat> more feminine in their approach to life. By feminine, I don't mean like a woman. No, I no. mean having a feminine energy, a softer energy, a more open energy mm. to be able to go with the flow of life as opposed to being rigid and to be, I am a man. Yeah. I'm going to eat some meat. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. some weight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, that's a really, really good point because there's lots of studies out there that actually, I guess, show that when, we, when it comes to problem solving, um, women tend to be more focused around helping other people problem solve. So they problem solve 
through interpersonal relationships and men tend to problem solve um, by themselves. Mm. And both are good. You know, we wouldn't be um, an active, you know, sential species in 2018 if, you know, that wasn't appropriate, you know, for evolutionary terms. Mm. But um, I think it's important that we both take leaves out of um, other, you know, different books and, um, and problem solving with other people you know, if I'm dealing with an issue and I talk to you, hey man, have you ever had this? And you go, yeah, dude, I've had the same thing. That makes me feel a fuck ton better, yeah. you know? And we don't have to do these things by ourselves because, you know, whether we like it or not, we may not know the answer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I feel like uh, perhaps back in the day or, you know, a few thousand years ago, the world roles that people played mm. in the world were a lot more um, separated. Mm. Um, the world is a lot smaller in many instances now information wise so it's yeah. almost given people um, the permission to mm. be a little bit more fluid in their uh, understanding and the way they live their life yep. so I suppose what I, what I mean to say by that is uh, mm. it, as a man as an empowered man mm. it gives uh, some men the ability to kind of like venture into that more feminine aspect as opposed to um, you know to use an extreme example, the Paleolithic times, yeah, where, or the hunter gatherer times, where yeah. men had to go out and kill shit, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right, and the women were there, I don't know, building, you know, building huts and yeah, uh, dealing with the family and the family, yeah, there's there's more crossover, there's more room for texture and mm. context uh, now. The context is completely different. Yeah, exactly, and and this this perfectly coincides with what you're building for first time dads you yes. know there's a there's a lot of shit you, you hear about postnatal depression all the time and that's i'm not taking any validity away from that that mental health issue but um there's another side to it as well mm-hmm. you know even just something is as i guess slightly tangent based is conflict resolution you know mm-hmm. there, there has to be a 50 50 compromise with all this sort of stuff but um yeah it's an interesting one i want to know why you actually started the idea of building that thing with first time dads was that from a personal perspective as well? Or it's a good question. Yeah. Um, well, the, my audience doesn't actually know. Oh uh, shit! Which is no. It's, this is a great platform. Yeah. And a great start. A great reason to start to announce it. Mm. Uh, so so basically, I'm a dad. I'm, I'm a dad. <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, my, my my beautiful little girl uh, at the day of this recording is three weeks and one day old, mm. and she is the most transformational um being that i've ever uh, had in my own personal life Mm. uh you know it's difficult to actually put into words but Mm. the only thing i can say is i was changed instantly Mm. the moment i saw her Mm. like instantly uh whilst i can talk about being a um an open person which i I feel that I am open to mm. being open. Mm. Um, <laughs> Physically as well. Uh, <laughs> Legs aren't crossed. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Hello, ladies. Yeah. Uh, uh, but what I experienced when when it, when this this girl came out was uh, absolute. Like all my barriers just kind of completely uh, were obliterated. Mm. Mm. Uh, the way I perceived them uh, previously, mm. I'm not. I'm not a. I'm not a crier. I always wished I was a yeah. crier. Yeah, yeah. And I certainly have never cried about things that make me happy. I didn't stop crying for the first week my child was born. Like, so I mean, good. I mean, I'd look at her, and, and that was it. Water, yeah, yeah. It's done. Finished. Yeah, see you later. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I digress. The reason I. The reason I, I talk about this is because having a child as a man. Um, and a woman, but mm. I'm, I'm going to talk about my own personal uh, journey. Being, Absolutely, being that I am a man, yeah, uh, uh, has been such a transformational and I uh, transformational experience, and I knew it was going to be that. I didn't quite know how it was going to look and how it was going to take place, but mm. I knew it was going to be a, a transformational experience. And what I am attempting to do uh, with this project which is, uh, uh, it's called Dad Bod. Mm. <laughs> um, and what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to uh, acknowledge that uh, men, obviously, like you said before, women um, have such an enormous demand Definitely. Uh, on them when, that, when they have children. Absolutely. And I would never, ever deny them uh, 
everything that they are experiencing and going through. But like I said, I'm going through what my own personal experience mm. is. And that is as a man, having um, the personal pressures of being able to, uh, of needing to provide for the family and yep. expanding family and also taking away a, a, a financial asset being uh, my wife's income. Yeah. Um, so there's pressure, mm. financial pressure and all the other pressures associated with being a man um, mm. in a new family associated with it. Um, and then when you come home, there's, uh, the, the, there's that, that, that um, understanding that there's more demand on you trying to keep the family to, yep. together and strong. And somewhere in this, your mental health and your physical health, which are intrinsically linked, mm -hmm. need to uh, maintain, but not just maintain. I want my physical and mental health to flourish. Yeah, get better. Absolutely. And get better. Yep. Because if you're not moving forward, you're moving backwards. Definitely. Because we're not inanimate objects. Mm. That's not what we do. We move. Mm. So without the intention to move forward and to grow, even in challenging times, especially in mm -hmm. challenging times, uh, I'm using uh, first-time fatherhood as mm. that premise and that uh, uh, vehicle mm. to, to grow and expand. And it's been a really interesting experience. Mm. Like I said, my child's three weeks old. Uh, I'm, I suppose, dialoguing and um, creating... Uh, um, uh, I'm documenting... Um, <clears throat> how I'm going to maintain my my physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual health mm. during this process, and that's going to be anything from um, short, sharp workouts that I'm uh, being able to do at, at home that are time efficient, um, through to uh, just small little uh, quote unquote hacks yeah, yeah. that I can uh, capitalize my my health at, with, and that also without doubt comes to using communication um, between myself mm. and my wife as um, a really, really strong anchor mm. because without communication, there's nothing. No, and definitely. So, so that's been a really, really strong point for us. We're still pretty fresh in the process, mm. but my God, just to being able, being able to say, this is where we're at. This is what I feel I need today. Mm. This is where, how have we, how have we gone for the yeah. last week? How do you feel you're doing? How do you feel you? How do you feel I'm doing? How do you feel we're doing as mm. a unit? It's like so refreshing because there's no guess guessing. It's mm. just like you're open, you're bare, you're naked, and you're going through the entire experience together. It's yeah, pretty, it's pretty cool. It's really and I, cool. I really like that. I, I think um, working with someone in any facet of life, the, the, the communication aspect is so important. But what's even more important in that frame of mind is actually being able to communicate objectively. And, and, and actually go, hey, this is what I felt, as opposed to, oh, I'm fucking angry. It's mm -hmm. like, I'm actually feeling angry right now because, yeah, I mean, mindfulness has to be on the fourth, you know, it has to be number one with all this sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. and just being able to recognize how you're feeling, what your thoughts are, and then looking at your life objectively again and going, oh, the reason I'm actually thinking this is because of this, or the reason I'm thinking this is because... I just didn't feel like you were there for me today when I was telling you that I was really freaking out because the baby can't stop crying and I don't know what to do. I just felt... I mean, if, if you love each other, you know, in any relationship, you want to you wanna achieve the, uh, the best possible outcome and you have to work together on that, you know? It's an interesting one. And I think, uh, I think the health and wellness... I'm not sure if... Because you and I, we're CrossFit coaches, we talk about all, all this uh, sort of stuff all the time. I, I, I find that... CrossFit coaching is, is great because we become very biased and we filter our reality. So this is all we really talk about, mm. you know. But you, you people come in every day to different sorts of classes, you know, and you speak to them and they the first thing you know that this you've taken a biased approach to the way you see life. So they'll you know, how was your day? Oh yeah, good, just work, man. I'm like, wow, it's a lovely reminder that there are people out there still struggling, mm -hmm. you know, and it's you can only imagine what they'd be going through if they have a kid, two kids, and then they've got mortgages, and then they've got all these other things. You know, it's it's an interesting one. It is. Mm. It's a, it's a, it's an amazing interesting one. And, and and just you're right. Getting out there and speaking to people mm. just gives you um, validation that everyone has a story. Yeah. Everyone has a a struggle, mm. um, and a struggle looks differently in everybody else's eyes. Mm. You know, um, even if it's 
irrational stru- like mm. fears aren't, aren't rational mm. but that doesn't give them any less of a platform mm. to uh to, to be heard no absolutely not absolutely not the tattoo on the left side of my ribs is every man thinketh his burden the heaviest you know mm. it's like doesn't matter objectively what you're going through mm. if it's tough for you it's tough for you exactly right yeah Real- reality's perception yeah and, and and you know endless uh, theories out there can validate that mm. yeah mm. Mm. yeah i love um i really do love the uh topic of emotion i thought it's just so fascinating for someone that's obviously finds personal value in talking about anxiety mm-hmm. as i mean the first thing off the bat is people forget that anxiety is an emotion <laughs> mm-hmm. you know it's it's caused two way one through logic in the cortex oh a bird flew over me oh fuck what was that oh just a bird and then your anxiety <laughs> comes down or it's when that fear by association comes in and represents itself presents itself in the amygdala mm-hmm. and then the amygdala these two little sort of almond shaped things in the head both hemispheres literally influence every single part mm-hmm. of your body like we forget that that's an emotion you know it's like to say someone's got anxiety oh shit man you've got anxiety it's like well we all do yeah it's okay you just have to understand how your anxiety manifests itself in your life you know exactly. to figure out and then look once you figure that out you can go oh shit i'm always anxious all the time why is that personal mm-hmm. responsibility shit i'm always anxious all the time because i eat terribly i never sleep well i drink five coffees a day I'm fucking freaking out over my boss who I don't like and I don't want to work here anymore. Well, let's try to create a life now where you actually become less anxious and feel more empowered. Mm -hmm. Let's do it, you know? But that concept of emotions, and this is something you can do um, just as a little tool for anyone listening. This is something that I love to do all the time is that write down on on a piece of paper rational fears and irrational fears right i'm freaking out all the time well that's fair enough because you're you're a shark diver who's always around sharks that could potentially kill you it's quite fair that your anxiety is quite high (laughs) that's irrational that's quite that's quite yeah that's irrational man (laughs) stop being a pussy (laughs) no look it's you know things like that i mean um if you're living in a war-torn country bombs are going off all the place it's very rational you know i mean your body's trying to tell you something get Mm -hmm. out you know but if you're rash irrational if you're scared all the time and your fears, there's just this, you know, significant number of irrational fears. It's like, well, what's going on in your life to cause all this, you know? And I think, again, I keep using that word, but objectively looking at your life as it maps out on a piece of paper and going, there's actually a lot of things I can change here. Mm. Uh, I think it's very, very productive. It's a, it's a useful, it's a very useful exercise to go through because mm. like you said, <clears throat> Previously, many, many, many thousands of years ago, when we didn't have the the comfort mm. of uh, you know heating, cooling, a uh, roof above our heads, mm. um, the ability to separate ourselves from I'm going to use the big the the, the big one, the saber tooth. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, there, there was a very, very valuable chem- chemical, biological uh, mm. reaction that happens in our bodies, but we're still giving that value through other means now so if we sit in a nine to five job that those chemicals are still going on mm. well the cortisol is being overrepresented cortisol is a good thing mm. to a certain degree to be able to give you um energy alertness yeah but it's, it, everything happens um in balance and it just feels like today's um reality that so many of us see ourselves in the balance is shifted Mm. to an unhealthy balance yeah and and the you know we could talk about this day and age for for uh for hours you know like there's so many good things about the modern world Mm -hmm. but we have to we have to understand how to tweak it in the way that works for us you know and like like you said man we lived in an immediate return environment you know thousands and thousands of years ago when you know I mean, I think Homo sapiens evolved. Uh, was I think I think that the sapien era was about one point eight million years ago or something. I think that's Homo erectus was around or something in, in Asia or whatever it was. But anyway, you think about that, right? We've been around. I've been around for twenty five years. Next month, mm-hmm. right? I'm not going to be able to tweak my biology that's been ingrained within me for nearly two million years. Mm-hmm. It just doesn't work like that, you know. So I, there are certain evolutionary needs that need to be fulfilled if I want to be happy, like. I have to make sure that I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to eat well. I'm trying to sleep well. Sleep is a fascinating one, man. Mm. They have this thing called the Hamilton Depression Scale. 
and it's a measurement from zero to 51 and it measures the degree of severity of depression for someone mm-hmm. and there's this bloke that I recommend everyone should follow it's called Johan Hari we're getting him on the show which is great I but, um, yeah, yeah. Things, dude. Uh, no no that's Yuval oh, sorry, um, Hari Harari Yuval Harari oh yeah. there you go yeah. <laughs> Yuval Harari <laughs> I was just being racialist or generalist yeah. there yeah. <laughs> oh, mate, there's a place for it <laughs> no but Johan Hari is like he's a um, he wrote a book called The Lost Connection which is really good I'll have to check it out yeah, um, and he he um, spoke about this Hamilton depression scale, 0 to 51, 0 being you just smashed 10 ecstasy pills, 51, you're on the bridge, ready to go, right? And um, by comparison, medication, um, from what I remember, there were serotonin uptakes, things like that, brings you down 1.8 mm-hmm. on the Hamilton scale, um, which is good because, you know, if you're 51, you're down to 49.2, you're not as... Um, severe you know mm-hmm. but uh sleep a good night's sleep brings you down six degrees mm-hmm. so there are lots of things that we can do straight away you know just to, to help our mental well-being you know mm-hmm. we have to do it and, and and you're right sleep is such an undervalued um tool because mm-hmm. so many people think mm-hmm. it's too simple yeah you know sleep two, two things sleep breath or let's call it three things three sleep breath water mm. i mean these the, the, the list is endless but like these are the first three mm. things that kind of come to mind for me sleep is just such an incredibly valuable the, the first thing people busy you know we talk about yeah, yeah. busy people yeah um i'm so busy man oh, oh dude oh, kids killing me oh, my, Fuck, God. my mortgage man oh, <laughs> working so hard and traveling so hard yeah oh. aren't you on porn hub no 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 no, no <laughs> it's, it's you 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 porn <laughs> But I'm really busy. Aren't yeah, you? exactly. Yeah, very, yeah. I'm very active. <laughs> yeah, you know, people are too busy to, to sleep. Yeah, and that's got to be that's obviously an, an irrational, very <laughs> fear. It's an irrational thought process. People yeah. need to go through and reevaluate mm. what sleep actually means in terms of the bottom of a pyramid of health. Mm. Sleep is like. That's that's the platform that mm. needs to be there. That needs to be there in a very strong, serious way. If you know just a little bit about the the, the biological implications of what sleep mm. does to you, mm. the hormonal replenishing and revibrancy that comes up between the the hours of ten and six and uh, ten p.m. and six a.m. Mm. The way your your body um, is intimately connected to the universe and yes. the earth. And the sun and the moon, when uh, when you are sleeping, recharging melatonin and serotonin and all of these human growth, human growth, mm. exactly right. I mean, human growth um, starts to really, really shift. I think between the hours of uh, what is it? Is Was it, it ten and two? It's between ten, 10 and two. two. Yeah, and, and it's so many people. But no one goes to sleep at ten. <laughs> well, I do. Oh, yeah. Well, you're, uh, yeah, you're killer. <laughs> oh, it's because I'm so busy during yeah, the day. Dude, yeah, dude, yeah. So busy. So busy. Yeah. <laughs> is that a Pornhub uh, pop up there, mate? <laughs> yeah, just pay no attention. Yeah. <laughs> this is a family Can't program. stop looking now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, like, it's just, it's just, they, they, these ty- types of things are just... These are just simple little things that you can mm. do. But, you know, it's no good going to bed at 10 o'clock if you've been on Pornhub for three hours Six. before yeah. looking at blue light. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah. Because that, that, that's going to that's gonna be an issue mm. because you're telling your body that uh, it's, it needs to be awake now. Yeah. You know, um, cortisol is pumping through your system now just when you, you need melatonin to, to pump through your system. Mm. So all these little things that our biology has been reliant on for so many millions of years... But now we have, with Moore's law and the, uh, mm. the the understanding that technology is forever expanding mm. and constantly changing, we have um, you know all these uh, uh, superficial uh, um, man-made lights that mm. are having a really really intimate effect on our biology, but we're not we're not aware of it because we don't know about it. Yeah, yeah. And education is the first step. It is that uh, you know look. I think fundamentally, if we can start to look at ourselves not as individuals but as a species that's evolved, you know, over many millions of years, a lot of the stuff that we do all day, every day, has only been around for 50 years. Mm -hmm. 100 years if you want to be super, super, you know, conservative or whatever you want to say on that. But 
we've lived pretty pretty harmoniously for for thousands and thousands and thousands of years, right? And like you said something before, our sleep works within our universe. Uh, absolutely, it does. Like the hormones are secreted at certain times of the night because the sun's down, mm-hmm. and we should all be able to wake up without an alarm clock, you mm-hmm. know. And if we're always sleeping in and having to press the snooze button, you have to start going, fuck, what am I doing wrong here? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's right. I just had f- four grams of meth last night. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing, man? And, and and that was only Wednesday night. Yeah. Before, uh, what was I doing? Yeah, it was what just dad's Saturday night. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> bit more. <laughs> Not to mention the porn. <laughs> yeah, but that, and this is where like, something that I, I love telling people, you know, and you know, you and I will be the first to admit we don't have all the answers. There, are, life is a journey, and there's there's tons of things that we have to keep, you know, try to hit hard because they may never be within, they may never be ingrained within us. You know, we just have to keep working hard on them. But you see people that are down in the dumps, and then you see people that are really happy, and they're just always the same habits and the same mindset and the same excuses and things that they're saying. People that are really happy always saying things like yeah man I just hit my fundamentals like I'm eating well I'm sleeping well I'm moving around I'm always in my natural habitat like I make sure there's always greenery around mm. there's tons of scientific studies that talk about how much happy happier we are if we're in our natural environment you know we shouldn't be we shouldn't see concrete and smoke and and pollution all the time you know but we just we just we just fall into the habit we do and all, all, all the all the time, because there are so many re- reminders for us to do that. Mm. But the reality is, you know, you were t- you touched on this earlier, and uh, I-, I remember seeing a study recently about um, one week, I believe, if you go camping out in wilderness mm. for one week, get rid of your phone, yep. get rid of all technology, it actually restarts your circadian rhythm. There you go. Back to where it's natural state is yeah, yeah, yeah. which you know is uh, look I, I i don't i don't know how valid the study is i think it's a pretty credible study but mm. it was um, actually a porn hub study yeah uh, well you know <laughs> yeah, which, it was a blue light porn hub study <laughs> which you know uh, still valid it's valid yeah, that's right yeah. it's on the internet it yeah. can't be wrong yeah exactly yeah we can, we can porn so anyway uh it, it, it's going back and 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 this is i also need to impress upon um, the audience that I'm, I'm certainly not uh, fearful of technology mm. and advancement. Mm. I think we live in such an exciting age where we Sorry. have so many tools that can help mm. our lives. But it's about understanding how to utilize them in a, an empowering way, yeah. as opposed to becoming slaves to our our iPhone, mm. as opposed to our iPhone using us, as opposed to us using our iPhone. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Do you know that um, you read Sapiens? You yes. Well? Yeah. The, I really love the point where he started talking about how when agriculture was introduced, we, we, we moved into that age thinking that life would be a lot easier. And the first thing we did was we began to harvest our own wheat mm-hmm. so that we'd bring wheat to our own village. But the point that you Val made, and I recommend everyone read the book Sapiens, you know? It's great. Yeah, it's a great book. Um, but the point that he made was now all of a sudden there was this job known as farming and we had to look after the wheat, care for the wheat, make sure that we had scarecrows up so the birds wouldn't grab the wheat. And if you think about it, the wheat enslaved us, Mm -hmm. you know? And we're into the same sort of thing with iPhones right now. Like every luxury we have now, you know, is, is, is there to make our life so much easier. iPhones, I can talk to anyone in the one, you know, I can talk to my partner when she's back in Scotland straight away. I can see her face. Mm -hmm. I can recognize her, her emotions and all this sort of stuff. But if we don't use it the right way, it's going to enslave us because we're always on it. We're attracted to the red light notification symbol. Mm-hmm. You know, that's an evolutionary phenomena. Mm-hmm. Ph- phenomena. Um, blue light keeps us awake, suppresses melatonin. All these things, you know, that we have to be careful of. And Yuval made the great point that all these luxuries over the agricultural um, scale that were, you know, they, they became necessities because... Mm-hmm. You know, now we can get on a plane and go anywhere we want in the world. But man, like I need, I need this holiday because I'm so fucked from my nine to five. It's like, this is designed originally to make your life better, but now you're relying on it because your life is really shit. And it's, and and it's valid. It's a really good point because it's Mm. validated over and over. Uh, Humans seem to have 
the ability to make all these incredible uh, discoveries mm. um, that do supposedly make your life easier, but we become imprisoned by them. Um, and self-imprisoned. Mm. Uh, it's a self-imprisonment. It is. It's not, it's not yes. something that, uh, you know, we're not, we're not forced with a gun to our heads. No, we have a choice. Yes. And, I, and I specifically, you, you may be a touch young to, to, yeah. to remember this, but maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> I remember when uh, was it, uh, was it uh, the the BlackBerry? Uh, oh yeah, yeah. First internet, yeah. Um, email, phone. Yeah, yeah. And I remember the, the little point clicker. Yeah, 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 the, yeah, yeah. The million different little. Uh, yeah, it wasn't a point clicker. It was an. It, oh, it was just buttons, actually, wasn't it? It was a phone. Like a key actually, it's uh, they're still around. I yeah. Think. Um, yeah. Before the iPhone, the eye black. <laughs> <laughs> We're all black. <laughs> um, and the, the and, and people were just celebrating the fact that it, you know accessing emails anywhere anytime mm. was just going to make life that much easier. Mm. And something within me, I don't know uh, whether I'm I'm kind of like um, you know thinking back and making myself a hero with yeah. respect, but uh, <laughs> I, I do recall instinctively that thinking this is not going to be yeah. a good thing. Yeah, and you know. You take a look and, uh, you know, being able to access an email um, anytime, anywhere, try going, uh, I'm sure anyone listening to this uh, who has gone on holidays uh, for the two weeks that they have off a year, um, there's still that expectation yep. to answer emails. Yeah, absolutely. Expectations change. Yep. And it's not from your boss. It may be from your boss, mm. but it's predominantly from yourself. Yep, definitely. And I yep. suffer from it as well. Same here. If you run your own business, you don't have time to step away from no. and that's only the only self limitation is the, the ones that you create yeah and this is where the tweak happens right so this this is when it's our responsibility right we know that the way humans work is we're probably going to get addicted to things okay so you have to think all right how can i get addicted in a positive way okay mm. well i can start a business that i'm obsessed about mm. so that even when i'm on holiday i'm thinking about it and it's making my life better yeah that way i want to answer an email right you know you just, you, you just tweak these little things to make sure that you're not enslaved by the beautiful technology out there, which is going to change your perception of it anyway. Yeah, that's a great way to look at it. Mm, it's very, mm, very cool. Mm. Hey, um, I always ask at the end of my show, um, oh, what was it? I think I've just gone now. Well, we, we always have like a six from six on Adventure Fit. Awesome. Um, but one thing I like to talk about is, um, oh, it's just gone out of my head. It's completely gone out of my head. It's okay. It'll come. It'll come. <laughs> I'm um, sorry to hear about it. No, no. Just the, let, let, let it marinate for a little yeah, while. Let it just, do you want me to stick on some U-Porn for you? Chuck it on, please. Yeah. Just no. let it um let it <laughs> semenize. <laughs> <laughs> I went there. <laughs> you so went there. That's <laughs> it. The big question is, do I edit that out? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the question is no. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Um, it's gone. I think it's gone for me, man. Well, let me ask you a question because this is something that I uh, actually ask all of my guests oh, yeah. as a sound check um, when I'm kind of interviewing them from the other side of the world. Yeah. Uh, what was the very... What, <laughs> you just... The first, the first answer that comes to mind. Yeah. Life. What was the very first thing you did this morning when you woke up? <laughs> very good. <laughs> uh, the first thing I did, yeah, it was not any related porn. I, I rolled over and I kissed my partner. Good morning. That's beautiful. Yeah. Very and then good. I had a wank on you, porn. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you want. <laughs> oh, shit. That was a joke. <laughs> If you wasn't, look, I tweaked modern life. You did. You, know? you are you, you are the, the reason we're going to really evolve into the, the stratosphere. Exactly. It's beautiful. Cop my DNA. <laughs> Do you, uh, oh, has anything come to, to mind as to what that question was? No, but here's my favorite question, and it's, it's a tough one, um, but um, I reckon we've got a good answer for it. Um, on the Adventure Week podcast, my final question is, if there were three people you could invite to a dinner, yeah. dead or alive... Who would they be and why? <laughs> yeah. Um, it's a good one. You could say that like, your family's there. You know, you can have your, your missus there and your kid as well. Sure, sure. Yeah. They're, they're like a... Just given. A given? It's like, like people you want to learn from. Historical figures. Yeah, yeah. Perhaps. Yeah. yeah. Um, my instinct is to, is to say something like... Um, Next stuff. Eh? Uh... <laughs> Someone like um, Nelson Mandela, but mm. at the same time having at the same table 
Adolf Hitler. Yeah, man. Do you know he's our most? Um, he's our he's our biggest one. Really, everyone says Adolf Hitler uh, because it's interesting. It's like, what were you doing? Because you did a lot of good. You did a lot of good at the start, and then you went downhill real bad. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah but he brought Germany out of a severe depression. Yeah, there was a financial yeah. interest involved, but he, yeah. he, you know, he had some pretty uh, deep seated, uh, skew, skewed views of the world. Oh, you but, went nuts. But went I would nuts. love to know. I would love to know uh, how he would uh, operate in a uh, with with a, a member of. The minority, yeah, or a minority sitting next to him at the table, yeah. Saying, you know, Nelson Mandela's just like eating his, uh, you know, uh, pork pie. Or Halal something. pork, sorry. Halal pork. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> his hawk. His hawk. Um, <laughs> and you know, he's just like uh, goes over to, to Adolf's Adolf's plate. Goes, you mind? You, you gonna eat that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. That would be classic. <laughs> oh shit! Uh, and you're just recording a podcast there. Welcome back to the world's wish list. And- oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. so, I know. Uh, yeah, so they're, they're, they're two people. I mean, mm. Uh, mm. Uh, there's there's so many. Uh, yeah. uh, you know, uh, Buddha. Oh, uh, he would be just great. He was just not... I love... I love... Do you know much about the Buddha, um, yeah, Buddhism? I, I, well, I, I, uh, I don't want to use the, the word study, but I kind of... Uh, um, learnt a lot about yeah. uh, Buddhism for a, a pretty decent period of time when I was in India for oh nice I, I, I kind of wandered around India for a good period of time and just learnt about the mind body connection and yeah. the vehicle the main vehicle in which I used to, to, to learn about it was Buddhist studies that is on the bucket list I really want to do that just go and live in India I just learn you know well one, one of the greatest things I did um, for my own study and development mm-hmm. was to actually the, the second day I was there I uh, did the most amazing course uh, it was in um, it was actually in a place called Dharmasala which is in the foothills of the Himalayas and it's where right. it's, it's actually where the Dalai Lama lives oh and uh, it's killing me yeah no it's incredible it's yeah. incredible and there's this place called the Tashida Institute yeah shout out to the Tashida my Toshida homies yeah. and, uh, Steve, Johnny <laughs> be real <laughs> keep it real be real <laughs> and it was an amazing amazing experience mm. Just, uh, we did a uh, what was it it was a 10 day um, introduction to Buddhism uh, solo oh, retreat dude. so we were solo for, t- for 10 days s- just immersed with um, meditation practice mm. and also just teachings on Buddhism mm. and that essentially like it just gave me just such a, an, an incredible injection of how to just live life as a good human mm. being mm-hmm. like, you know I'm not saying I, I do it all the time but yeah, it's a great <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a great reference point yeah it's, a, it's, a, it's an excellent reference point whenever you feel like you know you've got a couple of paths to take yeah um, it's just a great little tool set to have somewhere in the back of your mind you yeah. know um, to just kind of say, is this, is this, is this the right path to take? Yeah, for me. Yeah, oh, totally. Yeah. yeah, there are so many forks in the road all the time, you know. And like, I think um, if you can start to listen to your gut more and listen to that, like spiritual, I have no doubt that we are like spirits living in human shells, you know. Mm-hmm. And like, I, I genuinely, this is going to get a bit woo woo, but this is how I see it: is that the universe has this path, you know, and the universe is just all we are all energy, you know, mm-hmm. and. There's a finite amount of matter in the universe. There's an infinite amount of universe as far as we know it. And the energy we know, you know, from, from, from science that it's positive and negative, you know, and this is, this is, there's a lot of, there's a bit of science in this. It's more sort of my own way to perceive it makes me happy. But, um, there's all this sort of back and forth, negative and positive and all this sort of stuff. And when something attracts that law of attraction, you know, it feels right in your gut. It feels right in your soul, you know, and like mindfulness and meditation and all this sort of stuff really helps me just hone in on that and mm-hmm. make sure that I'm making the right decision um, that's authentic to who my am, who I am and who my spirit is and what it is, you know. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's like it's like when you do a snatch or a clean and jerk and you, fuck, you keep the barbell really close, you get under it really well, it just feels so much easier. Mm-hmm. It's effortless. It's completely effortless. It feels 20 kilos lighter than the, than the rep you did before, you know. Mm-hmm. And when you make a decision or you start doing something that's like, completely 100% of thought authentic with who you are as a spirit 
it feels like you're like, what the fuck? Like, why wasn't I doing this already? Mm. Like, it just feels so right. And then you start to ripple, you mm. know, you, you snowball. And then all of a sudden you've got this beautiful life and it's just like, oh my God, what was I doing before? No mm. wonder I was anxious. No wonder I was OCD as shit, you know? No wonder I was thinking pretty average thoughts, like, because I wasn't who I am, you know? Uh, but yeah. in the same vein, mm. who you were got you to where you are now. That's right. And it's, uh, Absolutely. And, 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 I don't, and I don't want to be too cliche, but it's 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 absolutely true. You need to have those experiences, yeah. those life experiences to give you where you are now, mm-hmm. to give you the depth of experience, to give you the knowledge, to give you to the, the understanding and the... Uh, the bias to be able to grow as a as a more complete person definitely from man. this point onwards yeah and you know I don't know as a way to like bring it back to part one of the, of the show but like the mental health issues were the was the best thing that ever happened to me mm. best thing that ever happened to me you know it was sparked off like some heavy intake of mushrooms <laughs> um, which we go into <laughs> but um, that was the best thing that ever happened to me because I wouldn't be sitting here you know I'd still be trying to follow some other life of trying to pick up tons of chicks and play AFL and all that sort of shit. Um, that just wasn't really what I was meant to do, you know? Mm. Um, yeah, it's an interesting one. And I wanted to know as well, how have you felt with your, that tick? You know, have you, cause I remember we were having a chat about, um, oh, sorry. Yeah. I'm damn too far away from the microphone here. Um, I remember you and I were having a chat about how, it's it's rising and falling and all this sort of stuff. It started off of you know some other part of your life, mm-hmm. but um, you were seeing someone. You were seeing some spiritual healers as well. I've seen all types of um, body workers, healers, um, all types of different um, manipulators. Yeah, uh, this, that, and the other. But and I've had all different types of uh, experiences whilst being under their guidance yeah. uh, and you know that's a whole other yeah. uh, conversation but it's uh, very very powerful experiences but at the end of the day I find when I am accepting of my I, I, I call uh, this, this tick my, my passenger mm. uh, when I'm accepting of this person and mm. uh, or, or this this entity uh, being yeah, a part yeah. of who I am, um, it, it, it just tends to kind of uh, melt away and it comes into me. Yes, um, yes, and, and it gets absorbed by me. Um, and I yeah. find and I find that when I'm doing things that ha- make me happy, mm. when I'm living my truth, when I am meditating regularly, mm. which tough, very, very, which is tough to mm. execute, but, um, it really contributes to living my truth. Mm. Um, all of these types of things just help me so much in just being the person I want to be. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it, 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 it's, it doesn't even really register on the scale. Yeah. So, uh, it is interesting. Uh, it's 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 an interesting thing, and I think about my my tick that came up for me a number of years ago is probably the uh, the thoughts and anxiety of anxiety and um, mental um, situations that came up for you. Mm, absolutely, just it manifested in a very in a different way. Yeah, it's the same shit. Totally, it all it is. Absolutely. Yeah, it's fascinating, man. I yeah, love it. it is fascinating. Mm-hmm. Look, that, that's a beautiful way to come full circle. Yeah. I, I, look, Tommy, we could sit here and we could I know. <laughs> like, this is probably, you know, edition one of yes. 5,000. Many, so, many. Many. But uh, that, that was a great chat, my man. Mm. And thank you so much for coming on the show. And, love to do. And thank you for having me on yours. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. We'll do it again. <laughs> Can't wait. Man. Thanks, brother. Alrighty, guys. Very much hope you enjoyed that show. Guys, we have just rolled out MindFit on the MindMates, uh, through the MindMate, which is a combination of bodyweight online training and lifestyle goal achievement through our Habit Hacker uh, work there. So it's a great little way for uh, for you fellas out there to uh, to keep fit um, in the comfort of your own home. We do a little, a few part, a little, excuse me, we do some park sessions and things like that. We also do um, some habit hacker training, which has actually been extremely—it's uh, been—it's been crushing it, which has been awesome. The uh, the clients that we've had so far 
have been absolutely loving the the habit hacker stuff there. So if you are, if you're someone that always tell you know tells yourself, oh, I'd love to read a book a month, or I'd love to get a date with a girl, or I'd love to you know do these little things that you keep putting off, that's what the habit hacker will ultimately do for you. And um, you know you're kept accountable through our online coaching work there as well. So it's uh, it's really great fun, guys. You can head to the mindmate. Dot com. Um, you can email info at themindmate.com and you can you can get a little bit more info through a uh, really chilled out conversation there. So I uh, sincerely hope you enjoy the podcast, guys, and check out what we're doing at MindMate. And, um, and uh, yeah, enjoy. I love you all, like genuinely sexually. All right, we'll speak to you next week. Bye-bye.